Man, if I can go back in time, I would have done a lot of things differently. Life is crazy, man. You start to learn the things that you wish you would have known earlier a little too late in life. And this video, I'm gonna help you not make the same mistake that I did over the last 13 years. So I'm right now sitting at 33 years old and I'm super grateful and appreciative and, and honestly feel extremely blessed to be where I'm at. And I'm proud of a lot of the things that I've done. However, if I go back to 20 years old, there are five things that I would have done differently and here are those five things. The first thing I would have done is understand money better. In school, we're not taught personal finance. They don't teach us how to grow our wealth. They don't teach us how to save money. They don't teach us how to have a healthy relationship with our income and our expenses. And I wish that I can go back to 20 years old and say, Zach, money's extremely important. I want you to spend one hour a day reading a book about money, about real estate, about stocks, about personal finance, about taxes, about financing, about leverage, anything that has to do with growing your net worth. Because if I knew what I know now at 20 years old, I would be a multi, multi millionaire. And obviously everyone can say that and no one has a crystal ball and, and hindsight is 2020. And all these sayings are very cliche, but they all ring very true. But if I can go back to being 20 years old again, I would read more books about personal finance. Now, when it comes to personal finance, there's two different perspectives. There's the Dave Ramsey perspective, which is live below your means, be very conservative, don't take on debt, don't use credit cards, pay cash for everything, including your car, pay off your student loans aggressively, things like that. And then there's the other mindset or perspective, which is, I'm gonna call it the Grant Cardone mindset, which is borrow as much money as you can, always use someone else's money, finance every deal you have, refinance, and always carry debt because you can get a higher return on your investment if you use other people's money, which is true. However, there's no right way and wrong way to look at money and coming up with a perspective, philosophy, and mindset around money that works best for you is going to be helpful. For me, I like the Dave Ramsey model. I like living below my means. I've paid off a rental property. I have cash in the bank. I invest 20% of my money into the stock market in my IRA. So I'm definitely doing like the Dave Ramsey route. I haven't always thought the Dave Ramsey way, but I believe that money is such a burden if we don't have it. And it's such a blessing if we do have it. And I don't think anyone would disagree. So I think it's important to kind of mitigate our risk not spread ourselves out too thin, make sure we're investing in retirement, make sure we're living below my our means and making sure we have cash in the bank. So one of the first things that a lot of people gotta do is increase their income, which is the second thing I'm gonna get to next. Now, the second thing I would have done if I can go back to being 20 years old again, oh man, would it be nice, is invest my time, energy, and attention into skills that pay, high paying skills, whether it's video editing or software engineering, coding, uh, building websites, understanding marketing and advertising, sales, uh, engineering, like all these skills that are so valuable today. When I was in college, it was 2009. And in 2009, it was a year after the global financial crisis when a lot of people went broke because the real estate market crashed. That was a very like defining moment in financial history. And I didn't really understand Understand what was going on at the time. In 2009, everyone was saying, go get a job as an accountant, go get a job in finance, go get a job, whatever you can do to make $60,000 to $100,000 a year, invest in your retirement, and you'll be happy. Well, I wish someone would have given me advice instead of that, saying, hey, Zach, invest in skills like coding or marketing or sales, because entrepreneurship is the route to go if you want to be wealthy. No one gets wealthy making $200,000 a year unless you do insider trading like Nancy Pelosi. If you want to be rich, you have to be in sales. You have to build a business. You have to be an entrepreneur because you cannot become extremely wealthy with a capped salary. So if I can go back to 20 years old, I would say, Zach, invest in skills that are high paying. Sales, marketing, coding, engineering, and leadership. Number three, and I think a lot of people are gonna resonate with this. I wouldn't drink so much and I would take better care of my body. Like physically, I feel amazing right now. I've done three full Ironmans and I'm in pretty good shape. And that's something that brings a lot of value to my life. I have high energy levels. I have a lot of mental clarity. I just feel like I'm running at peak performance right now. And if I would have been 20 years old, try my best to run at peak performance and live a life at like an elite physical and healthy level, it would carry on to where I'm at today. And it would make things a lot easier for me. As we get older, things get more difficult, especially physically things get more difficult. And the quicker 
and the sooner you pay more attention and you're more aware of your physical body and you have that like mind body connection, you will be able to just live a better life. So I think it's that mind body connection that takes a lot of time to cultivate. It takes a lot of time to practice and implement and it's something I'm still working on now and I have not perfected it by any means. But because I do such extreme physical challenges like Ironmans and 100 pushups a day, uh, I do have a pretty good mind body connection. But if I can go back to 20 years old, I would start learning more about that mind body connection and I would start ingraining the physical healthy habits that I have today back then. Number four, and this is a mindset shift that I wish I would have had earlier. So at 33 years old, I have a lot of humility and I'm extremely humble and I understand that I don't know everything because you don't know what you don't know and being aware that you don't know what you don't know is the first step to learning more and understanding the world better. So I would have had more humility and I would have realized that I didn't have it all figured out because at 20 years old, a lot of us think we're invincible. And at 20 years old, a lot of us think we know what the fuck we should be doing when we don't know what we should be doing and we should have more humility. We should have more of a growth mindset and less of a fixed mindset. So basically think of the complete opposite of stubborn and arrogant. People that are stubborn and arrogant, oh, they know what's best for me. I know exactly what career I should go into. I know exactly what I should do with my money. Trust me, I got everything taken care of. Not having that mindset is the mindset I wish I would have had, right? So at 20 years old, I thought I had everything figured out and uh, now at 33, I realized how stupid I was. So channeling that humility and being hyper aware of realizing that even today at 33, yes, I'm very close to being a millionaire and I've started successful businesses and I'm extremely happy. I've traveled the world. I'm in an amazing relationship and I own a beautiful house and I'm driving my dream car. That's all great. But I still channel that beginner's mindset and I still try to live every single day with a ton of humility. So if I can go back in time to 20 years old, I wish I would have had more of a growth mindset and I wish I would have been less arrogant. Number five, and this might be my favorite one and I feel like a lot of people are gonna be inspired after I tell this story. I wish I would have tried more things because there were a lot of things that I thought were cool at 20 that I no longer think are cool and there's a lot of things that I think are cool at 33 that I didn't think were cool back then. For example, running a marathon or completing an Ironman triathlon. Those are things that I was like, I would never freaking run 26 miles. You gotta be kidding me. That is something I would never freaking do. Or even reading a book. I'm like, why would I read a book? That's so boring, right? So a lot of those things that I just thought weren't cool back then, um, I would try more things. So maybe rock climbing, maybe kayaking, maybe I would try flying planes, maybe I would try playing an instrument, maybe I would try anything else to get me out of my comfort zone or anything else that I thought I would never do in life. And that's still something I'm trying to do today is like doing different things, whether it's going to an art museum or going to a green market or going kayaking down the Potomac or going to a meditation retreat or traveling to Bali, like things that I would never do, I now say yes to. So I guess to summarize number five, uh, the one thing I wish I knew at 20 that I know now is to try everything because you don't know what you're gonna like and you don't know what you're gonna like unless you try a lot of freaking things. So get out of your comfort zone, do things that are different, think ways that are differently, do anything you can do to get out of your monotonous routine, which will help you not feel stuck. And if you didn't watch my previous video on what to do if you're feeling stuck, you can watch it right up here. Thank you guys so much for watching, sticking around to the very end. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button if you like this video and drop a comment if there's some other videos that you guys wanna see me record in the future. Peace.